Lobsters are one of the most sought after luxury foods in the world, right? It's the kind of food you'd expect to be served on a cruise ship or as a main course at a fancy wedding. You probably haven't noticed, but as of 2020, you might not have to pay such a premium for this so-called delicacy. Stay tuned because I'm about to solve the mystery of why lobsters can now be considered cheap. To get an understanding of how lobsters earned their prestigious reputation, let's first go back a few centuries to a time when the lobster was considered a food for the poor. It might seem strange, but lobsters were once considered the cockroach of the sea. Bottom feeding, dirty creatures only fit for prisoners, apprentices, and slaves. This is because in the early days, lobsters were incredibly abundant. Residents in the Massachusetts Bay Colony often found that they washed up on the beach in two foot high piles, and they were considered a trash food. They were so plentiful that in 1622, William Bradford, the governor of the old Massachusetts Territory, now Maine, was ashamed to confess that the only food he could offer newly arrived colonists was the lowly lobster. So when, how, and why did this downtrodden crustacean experience such a remarkable rebranding? In the early 19th century, you could expect to spend around 53 cents on a can of Boston baked beans, while picking up canned lobster would set you back a mere 11 cents making it a popular choice for cat food. Then, as railways began to spread through America in the 1800s, something rather intriguing happened. Transportation managers realized that inland passengers would likely know nothing about the humble lobster, which presented an excellent opportunity to profit from a food most locals cared so little about. Meanwhile, lobster canneries all over Maine were already producing more than enough of the stuff, so it seemed like a win-win. The plan paid off. Passengers took to the exotic taste of lobster almost immediately, and demand outside of the transport industry experienced a steady increase. By the 1880s, chefs had also made the crucial discovery that cooking lobster live rather than killing it first seemed to significantly improve the taste. By now, Americans were convinced to give the dish a second shot and were pleasantly surprised when they did. Lobster started turning up on fancy restaurant menus around the country and the crustacean earned its spot as one of the most impressive social climbers in culinary history. Let's fast forward back to present day where lobster has long been established as a dish you wouldn't expect to come home to on a regular evening, unless you're shelling out for a special occasion. Prices vary greatly depending on the time of the year and the area you live in, but generally a reasonable white tablecloth lobster dinner in a big city can range from $30 to $45 for one lobster weighing one to one and a half pounds. This is down to a number of factors. Unlike most fisheries, there aren't any commercial farms able to cheaply provide a lot of lobsters, so the market is smaller and even more lucrative. Farming is difficult for a number of reasons. The crustaceans grow slowly, eat a lot, and are particularly susceptible to disease and their eggs are difficult to raise. This means the industry relies exclusively on wild catches, so lobster must be carefully transported from places like Maine, which supplies over 80% of domestic lobster to the US, and crucially kept alive in the process. Thanks to modern refrigeration systems and overnight air delivery, the lobster industry has actually been booming in recent years despite unforeseen changes like warming oceans. Or at least it was, until now. One of the biggest importers of lobsters in the world is China, where the delicacy is considered a sign of wealth and status among the middle classes. To satisfy their cravings, China turns to outside markets in the US, Canada, and New Zealand. In 2016 alone, ITE Food & Drink reported that China had purchased enough frozen and fresh lobster products to be worth some half a billion dollars. According to the South China Morning Post, between January and March 2019, some 12,600 tons of lobster were imported to China, while the US, which also imports them, brought in 87,000 tons. Unfortunately, that had almost grinded to a complete halt by early 2020. You might have guessed it by now but that's all down to the illness that's keeping us in isolation right now that I can't mention online or this video will be demonetized. As the outbreak began to worsen and the spread showed no signs of slowing, lobster imports to China have almost stopped entirely due to new travel regulations. Although demand is usually expected to reach a seasonal high around the time of the Lunar New Year in January and February, when the lobster is considered a sign of good fortune, a sharp decline in Chinese demand has led to an oversupply in markets whose producers usually send their lobsters abroad. The impact is twofold. Less demand from China means producers must turn to American consumers instead, while the social and economic effects of the pandemic and social distancing means people are far less likely to dine out at expensive restaurants. 
There is a silver lining in all this, or a dark cloud depending on which side of the supply chain you're on, because lobster prices are now approaching an all-time low. Discounts vary from state to state, but in Northern California, you might now expect to pay about $20 per pound for lobster, a 50% slash from the usual $40 price tag according to the COO of Giovanni's Fish Market and Gallery in Morro Bay. Exports from Maine to places outside of the U.S. have also taken a serious blow. One producer even reported a drop in orders from 1,000 boxes a week, each carrying 33 pounds, to just 120 boxes. This has resulted in the lowest prices producers have seen in four years, meaning they have no choice but to offer premium products for cheaper rates to the delight of saving savvy customers. Although the ripple effect is slowly sinking American lobster prices as the issue rages on, nowhere has been hit quite as hard as Canada. Back in 2018, China placed a 25% tariff on all lobster imported from the US thanks to trade tensions caused by President Trump. As a result, Canada stepped in to fill the void like some lobster-wielding hero. In the lead up to the outbreak, Canada reportedly shipped around 1.5 million pounds of shellfish from Nova Scotia to South Korea and mainland China each week. And in the first six months of 2019, more than 30 million pounds of lobster made its way to China. Now, Canadian producers are being forced to try and sell their stock to the U.S., which already has more lobster than it knows what to do with. Usually, between 7 to 10 cargo flights that transport fresh seafood products into the Asian market leave Canada's Halifax Stanfield International Airport each week. Since the illness has crippled these travel opportunities, just two to three of those weekly flights go ahead. Demand for live Canadian lobster from mainland China has dwindled to just 5% of its normal volumes in recent months, sending prices tumbling. Lobsters that are usually sold straight from the dock to the market at $11.75 to $12.50 Canadian per pound, or about $8.11 to $8.63, are now going for $8.95 to $9.65 Canadian, or around $6.18 or $6.66, which is an unprecedented drop. New Zealand has suffered an even stranger lobster-related fate at the hands of the virus. Thanks to a sudden increase in stock and nowhere to send it, the country was left with 150 to 180 pounds of live rock lobster being held in tanks and pots. On the 5th of February 2020, the government made a surprising decision by announcing that a limited amount of this excess stock would be released back into the water. Guess it was their lucky day. Officials hope that they can harvest the lobster again after trade disruptions have been resolved, unless they made a speedy enough getaway. Now that China's ongoing love affair with the lobster is on the rocks, an abundance of top-of-the-range crustaceans in places with not enough demand for them has put a real pinch on the market. If you're yet to see what all the fuss is about when it comes to the high-end delicacy, now's the time. Instead of coughing up something like 17 bucks for a swanky lobster roll from a hipster food truck in Brooklyn, before walking away wondering why you paid in the first place, you might just be able to sniff out a deal you're unlikely to find in years gone by. But lobsters aren't the only food product to be rocked by the effects of this worldwide disaster, and if you consider yourself a meat aficionado, you can now rejoice. It looks like steak is about to get a whole lot cheaper. Already, U.S. cattle prices have plunged by 20% in 2020, signaling that troubles for the beef industry may have just only begun. There are two main factors at work behind this swift demise. The first has to do with yet another contagious disease in China, but this time affecting pigs rather than humans, African swine fever. ASF was first detected in China in 2018, and by the end of 2019, it had wiped out half of China's and a quarter of the world's pigs. Naturally, pork prices in China spiked dramatically, and as people turned to beef as an alternative, the country ramped up imports from the U.S. to satisfy the demand. In turn, traders saw dollar signs in their eyes and jacked up their prices too. Then, the disease which shall not be named hit China in December 2019, and it all went downhill. As around 50 million people in China were placed under mandatory quarantine and travel bans grounded transport planes, beef demand took a hard fall. Traders then scrambled to lower their prices and turned back to U.S. buyers, but this is where the second sucker punch comes in. Americans didn't want it either. The reason is pretty simple. When consumers feel richer, they buy more beef. But when they feel the pinch, they seek cheaper alternatives. If there's one thing that the outbreak isn't doing, it's putting more money in people's pockets. For some perspective, when the Great Recession hit last decade, U.S. beef consumption dropped around 10% between 2007 to 2011. 
The fallout of this worldwide disaster has also created a fear of shopping that is increasingly keeping meat eaters at home, unless they're out shopping for non-perishable items like pasta or baked beans. The result? Premium steaks at cheaper prices, at least for now. Meanwhile, the hot beverage industry is also feeling the pressure as tea prices have taken a recent nosedive. This might be music to the ears of anyone British, but for China and Iran, who are among the world's biggest tea importers, this is a problem worth worrying about. In March, tea prices at auction reportedly plunged by a massive 40% as China and Iran stopped importing the commodity following the outbreak. In 2019, China, which mostly produces green tea, had imported a massive 13.45 million kilograms of black tea from India. By comparison, in 2014, China had only imported 3.6 million kilograms of the stuff. But as Chinese millennials suddenly started to develop a taste for black teas, exports to China experienced a demand for almost four times as much tea. The last shipments of tea reportedly went into China before the Lunar New Year celebrations, which began on January 25th, but as of now, there's a total lockdown on movement of teas within the country. There's no doubt that as the pandemic continues to spread and take hold across the globe, the economy will continue to suffer. As big cities continue to go into lockdown and transportation flights find themselves grounded with excess stock that urgently needs shifting, there's no telling where the tremors of the outbreak will be felt next. Next time you hit the store, it might be worth keeping a close eye on the prices of your favorite foods. You could be lucky enough to snag a one in a million bargain. So have you been able to pick up lobster or any other food products at suspiciously great prices recently? Will you try to now? Or are you sticking to foods with longer shelf life? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And thanks for watching.